Now, we've seen that matter can exist in three states, right? Fundamentally, even though we told you there are more states possible. So one thing we're going to do here is inquire if one state can change from, say, a, something can change from solid to a liquid or a liquid to a gas or vice versa. Are all these possible? So in order to do this, let's first play with it, right? Now, what we want you to do is take a little beaker, right? And put what's called a normal ice that you have in your freezer, put it inside, stick a thermometer into it, right? And keep this apparatus intact and start to heat this. Because the first thing we're going to study is can we use this idea of temperature to change the state? So the first thing is change in temperature. One of the ways to change temperature is to heat it, right? So you begin to heat this beaker. Let's see what begins to happen, right? We don't know what's going to happen. Let's see what happens. Keep washing the thermometer and the blocks of ice. So it keeps increasing. Yeah, you're heating it. The temperature, the temperature on the thermometer is continuously increasing. You watch it. And at a particular point, it stops, right? And then you look, the ice is beginning to melt, right? You can see that the ice is become, becoming water. Great. And now you mark that little temperature that you got, right? You take a note of it and then continue watching. And let's see what happens now. So now it's water, right? Looks pretty calm for a while. And as it goes, as time runs, temperature begins to start increasing again. So for a while, the thermometer was was quiet, it was sleepy, but now it's beginning to start getting active again. And temperature starts rising all over again. And after a while, it again stops. And then you look at the water, the water is not calm anymore. It's really, really, it's bubbling. In other words, it's boiling, right? It's boiling and it's leaving. So you start observing that when it's boiling, again, the temperature is constant. Okay. So this is what you've seen, even though we don't know why exactly this is happening, right? So what do you observe? Ice, which started off as a solid, right? Became liquid. And then even you could see the little fumes going up. So it boiled, it became gas. And in all this process, the temperature stopped at two times. So you've seen a lot of things right now. And it is our job now to go and decode what really happened here and find out how we can explain this. So let's begin first by zooming in into this entire picture. And we look at this solid ice, right? You see it and you see it being heated up. Now, what we know is that temperature, we told you, is just the kinetic energy of the molecules inside, right? So as you increase the temperature, the molecules of ice begin to start vibrating more and more and more. They're vibrating more and more and more. And as they are vibrating, what is the meaning of them vibrating more? The temperature is increasing. And that's what you see, right? And at that particular point, which is 273, approximately 273 Kelvin, they begin to start what we usually call zero degrees Celsius, right? At that point, what do they do? Their vibration becomes so much that they start breaking away, right? Their shape breaks, they start becoming what we call liquid, the familiar liquid water. And while this happens, what you observe is that their kinetic energy is not increasing anymore. The heat that is being supplied is only being used to break them from their solid state into a liquid state, right? So state change from solid to liquid, this is called the point of fusion, right? Where solid becomes liquid, or in other words, the point where it's melting, right? The simple word for it is melting. So great. Now, as this is happening, the temperature does not increase. Then, once all of this ice is converted to water again, now, this energy that we are supplying is not just used to change solid to liquid or that phase change, but is used to increase the kinetic energy again. So the water that is very, very normal right now, right? It's pretty calm. It starts to start vibrating harder. It's moving around more. It's moving around more. The kinetic energy of water is increasing. In other words, the temperature of water is increasing. And you see that again. And at another beautiful point at 373 Kelvin or what we usually call 100 degrees Celsius, the water begins to start breaking away. Molecules of water get enough energy, enough kinetic energy to be able to start breaking away from each other. In this case, the bonds, intermolecular bonds between them, which are hydrogen bonds in this case, because it's water, begin to break. In general, there could be any covalent bond that holds molecules together. So they begin to break away and start going off as what we usually call steam. So there are two very, very special points here, right? One of them is the point where it melts, called the melting point, and the other point where it boils, where water boils, called the boiling point. And in both these times, the temperature in the thermometer is constant because at that point, the energy is spent to convert the state or a phase change rather than a temperature change. Whew. Now, that must have been a lot to take in in these couple of minutes, right? So what we are saying, there are a couple of more terms we're going to add on to these as labels because one of the questions you will have, which we've already addressed, is that if you're supplying heat and the thermometer is not increasing, then where is that energy going? Yes. So that is going into converting one state into another. And in the case where it's, it's a state change is solid to a liquid, that heat is called the latent heat of fusion. 
So latent heat of fusion is what we say when you want to say that the energy supplied is used to convert the state and not to change the temperature. Great. The word latent really means hidden. So it's kind of a hidden heat, right? Because we don't see it. We don't. We don't. We're not able to see where it's going. We can't see it on the thermometer. And you were to do the same thing for a liquid to a gas. It's called the latent heat of vaporization. And there again, the temperature does not change. Now that we've seen that matter can change its state from solid to liquid to gas with an increase in temperature, the one question remains: Is this liquid bridge? Does this liquid bridge always have to exist from between solids to gases? And the answer is, it's not true, because sometimes solids can go directly. To being gases. If you don't believe me, find some camphor at home and uh, burn it. Right? If it is really, really pure camphor, not mixed with wax, it will directly become gases. You do not see any liquid camphor flowing around. You could do this with ammonium chloride as well. And this process, by which a solid changes into a gas directly, bypassing this middle state called a liquid, is called sublimation, where this jump happens. Right? Now, an interesting application of this jump is what's called dry ice. It's got nothing to do with ice. It's carbon dioxide. So if you take solid carbon dioxide, right, take its temperature so down, so low that it becomes solid carbon dioxide, and then you let it be at room temperature, it's going to start changing into gas directly from its solid state. Why would I choose this compound of all these compounds? Because any stage performance, most stage performance that you see, where there's a lot, large amount of gases coming out, right, especially if they want to show the heavenly world, you know, and somehow they believe that heavenly worlds always have. A large carpet of gas below, and that's all created by dry ice. So you put a lot of dry ice, it sublimates, and it looks like some kind of heavenly smoke is floating around all the place. Right? Great. So now you know what sublimation is as well. And the next thing we're going to touch upon is that we saw what temperature does to the state of a substance, right? Whether it's solid, or liquid, or a gas. The next question is, what can we do with pressure? Can I apply a force to try and force one state to become another state? And the answer is yes, and we'll see how. And the question now is, does an object or any any substance have to reach boiling point? Right? Let's just take like a solid, right? Or a liquid. A liquid does a liquid have to reach boiling point before it becomes a gas, or is it possible that liquids reach the gaseous state, some amount of them at least, even without the boiling point? Now, if you were to think about this, if you keep water in a container, right? After some time, the amount reduces, right? You would have seen this. Even if you've not noticed it in a personal level, you would notice that people take seawater out there, right, and they keep it. And pretty soon, after some time, all the seawater, you know, evaporates, leaving behind crystals of salt. That's how we make salt, right? So what's happening here? Clearly, you're not creating a furnace underneath the ground, just you know, heating the water up to make it boil. No, that's not possible. So what's happening here? What exactly is happening? And that's going to be what we jump into in the next module and and really discover. And let's do that right now. So we gave you two temperatures when we told you that solids become liquids, become gases, right? In case of water, it was two two seventy three Kelvin and three seventy three Kelvin, or zero degrees and hundred degrees Celsius. Now, what we did not tell you is that that number is not fixed; it is going to change based on what the atmospheric pressure is. And this is also our excuse to try and find out what the effect of pressure is on the state of a substance, right? Because if the answer is going to change based on pressure, Right, at atmospheric pressure, the answer is zero degrees and hundred degrees. In other words, ice melts into water at zero degrees Celsius, and water boils into water vapor at hundred degrees Celsius. Now, both these are true only at atmospheric pressure. Now, the fact that these two numbers will change when the pressure changes means that pressure must have some influence, right, on the states, and that's what we're going to study right now. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go exactly opposite, right, from how we went in the first case. We're going to take a gas right, and see what happens as we increase the pressure on it. So, if you were to imagine a container, right, and put a piston on top, airtight piston, put some gas inside. You know that the gas molecules are going to be bouncing around, right? With the large amount of volume, large amount of intermolecular space. But we know that gases are compressible. So, you compress that gas; it begins to start. Volume is going to reduce. The pressure is going to increase and increase and increase at a point. You can compress it to the point where it becomes a liquid, right? You've compressed the intermolecular spaces so much that they start becoming a liquid. Now it exists in a liquid state. You could compress it even more till it becomes a solid. Where you've compressed it so much that it finally becomes a solid. 
Now, one of the things about we already spoke about dry ice or carbon dioxide, right? Dry, which is just basic solid carbon dioxide. Now, how do you reach so- solid carbon dioxide? By applying so much pressure that you bring it to that state at a very very low temperature. So, in this case, you might have to maintain a low temperature and a low pressure because once you apply the pressure, until and if you don't keep a low temperature, it's going to start becoming a gas again, right? So, clearly, there are two factors that are, that kind of affect the state of a substance. One of them is temperature, and the other is pressure. Now, one of the interesting applications of this idea that changing pressure can influence the change in state is our very familiar pressure cooker. Now, what does the pressure cooker do? If you had kept the top open, right, and if you start heating something, after a point, the water inside starts boiling at 100 degrees Celsius. Now, what does that mean? And we know that the temperature on the thermometer doesn't increase. In other words, the temperature is going to remain stuck at 100 degrees Celsius. In other words, you cannot heat anything more than 100 degrees Celsius because water will start boiling if you're if you're heating it in water. That is. So how do we get around this? Right by putting that lid on top, thereby making it so that the air that comes does not escape. So once water starts boiling, let's say, right, what's going to happen? That air has to escape, right? Water vapor has to escape. If it does not escape, if it's stuck inside, what increases? That's right. The pressure increases. Right? It becomes more than the atmospheric pressure, and the larger and larger the pressure, the larger and larger the boiling point of water becomes. So this increase in pressure increases the boiling point at which we can cook the food, which would not have been possible if we did not put that lid and increase the pressure of this container. So a pressure cooker allows us to cook food at higher temperatures. By playing with the idea that pressure and temperature both affect the state at which a substance will be, great. Now, as a last summary of what we have done here, if you were to take a solid, a liquid, and a gas, so solid changing to a liquid is called by a pro- is ha- happens by a process called melting, a liquid to a gas by a process called boiling, a gas to a liquid happens by a process called condensation, a liquid to a solid happens by a process called that's right. Solidification, right? A liquid to a solid, solidification. Great, but we know that solids and gases can become one another directly as well, and a solid becomes a gas directly by what's called sublimation.